In a city called Little Italy, a girl and a boy opened the movie by talking about how they fell in love. It all started when they were kids. The girl's name's Nikki and the boy's Leo. They are from two Italian-American families that are very close. Their fathers, Sal and Vince, are best friends. Their mothers, Dora and Amelia, are very close, and unbeknownst to them, their widowed grandparents, Franca and Carlo, are in a secret relationship. The families share everything and they spend a lot of time together. Nikki and Leo have known each other since they were babies and were best friends. They did everything together and were known in the neighborhood as Little Italy's terrors because of their pranks. Things changed in their life when they were teenagers. Nikki had a crush on Leo, but only her grandmother noticed her infatuation. Once, she tells Nikki that she should never squeeze love out of a man. That made Nikki keep silent about her crush because, in her mind, Leo only saw her as a friend. Their friendship was tested when their fathers got into a fight. Sal and Vince had a pizza place together that was very famous in the neighborhood. Their pizza was so good because of Franca's secret homemade sauce and Carlo's delicious crust. There was a neighborhood pizza competition and they were excited to compete with their amazing pizza. Something happens at the competition that made Sal and Vince start hating each other. No one, not even their wives, knows what happened. Their hatred is so deep that their families are forbidden from talking to each other. For that reason, Nikki and Leo's friendship changed. The only thing that didn't change was Nikki's crush on Leo. Years later, Nikki isn't living in Little Italy anymore. She grew to be a pretty young woman and an accomplished chef working in London. Her dream is to have a successful career and she has the perfect opportunity when her boss, a strict woman called Corinne, tells her and another chef that she's opening a new restaurant. She wants them to bring her a complete menu and the best one is going to be the new chef at the restaurant. The only issue for Nikki is that she's there with a student visa and she needs to get a work visa. To do that, she has to go back to Canada and Little Italy. Needless to say, Nikki isn't happy about it. She doesn't like to go to Little Italy because of the tension between her father, Sal, and Vince. They are always fighting over the smallest things and Nikki is uncomfortable to be in the middle of it again. She's very different from the tomboy she used to be as a kid. Now she wears designer clothes and works for a famous chef. She wants her trip to Little Italy to be quick. Upon sharing the news with her long unseen family, they mistakenly assume that she intends to return permanently. Meanwhile, Leo is still in Little Italy. He works at his family's pizza place as a delivery guy. He loves Little Italy and has no intention of moving. For him, nothing is more important than family and he can't bear the thought of being away from him. Leo's a ladies' man and everyone in town knows it. He's handsome with a boyish charm and an Italian accent. The women in Little Italy, especially the older ones, love Leo. Besides working for his father, he also works at a bar with his friend Luigi. His family's broke and Vince can't afford to pay Leo a bigger salary. With the fight with Sal, their pizza places are not doing well. Leo thinks Vince has to change the pizza place and be less traditional, but Vince refuses. He's a headstrong man and his word is law. Moving on, Nikki arrives in Little Italy and meets her friend, Gina, who is excited to see Nikki again. Gina notices that Nikki didn't bring a lot of luggage and mentions that her family won't be happy that she isn't there to stay. Nikki doesn't care. She has her own life and dreams, and staying in Little Italy isn't part of it. Gina purposefully takes Nikki to the bar where Leo works so they can meet after so long apart. While waiting for their drinks, Gina and another friend of theirs talk about Nikki's new boyfriend. The man is rich and famous, and Nikki appeared on the cover of Vogue because of him. Leo is working and sees Gina talking to a pretty brunette, though he doesn't recognize Nikki. Gina points him out and Nikki watches as he helps a blonde woman play pool. It sends a pang through Nikki's heart because even after all those years, she still holds a special place for Leo in her heart. Her crush is still alive, but Nikki gave up on Leo a long time ago. Leo approaches after some time and notices it's Nikki. He's surprised because she looks so different from the girl he knew. Nikki pretends not to be happy to see him again, but soon they are joking like they were kids again. Leo challenges her to play soccer to see who is better, and Nikki is too competitive to say no. They had always competed against each other, and Leo jokes he let Nikki win every time. Along with their friends and the patrons at the bar, they start playing and drinking. It's the most fun Nikki has had in a while. She would never admit it, but she missed being Leo's friend. It starts raining and Nikki is wasted. She almost kisses Leo on a whim but ends up passing out after drinking so much. The next day, she wakes up in a strange bed, and when she sees Luigi changing his clothes, she freaks out. She thinks they slept together, but Luigi reassures her they didn't. He just shares the place with Leo, and Nikki sleeps in Leo's bed. Leo appears and offers her some coffee to help with her hangover. Nikki wonders if they were intimate since she doesn't remember anything, and Leo makes ambiguous remarks, hinting that they slept together. Nikki panics because she thinks she betrayed her father by sleeping with the enemy, which Leo finds very amusing. He finally tells her that he's only joking, to Nikki's relief. The night before, she just took off her clothes and passed out when they arrived at his house. The only reason he didn't take her to her parents' house is that Sal would be mad. Nikki borrows one of his shirts and Leo watches her putting it on. He can't take his eyes off her. She looks beautiful and he imagines what it would be like to be more than a friend to her. 
He compliments her beauty, wondering what happened that she changed so much. Before Nikki leaves, she asks Leo to not tell her family that she arrived early and he agrees. Meanwhile, Vince's pizza place is packed with people. It's been a long time since so many people went there to eat, and it's strange. Amelia goes outside and covertly talks to Dora about it. Unbeknownst to their husbands, they are still friends and tell each other everything. They enjoy gossiping about their husbands' disagreements over glasses of wine. Dora is very happy that Nikki is coming back and Amelia is excited for her. Later on, Nikki finally shows up at her parents' pizza place. They are all thrilled that she is back home after so long, and Nikki is happy to see them too. She missed her family. What she didn't miss is her mother meddling in her love life and trying to get her to marry. Their heartfelt encounter is cut short because there's a commotion in Vince's restaurant. Sal put illegal substances amongst Vince's oregano and then called the police on them. When the police arrive to arrest Vince, Leo is abused by a police officer who is romantically interested in him. Nikki watches and holds her laughter, though she feels annoyed that her father is still being so immature with Vince. She whispers an apology to him before following her parents. After the entire ordeal with the police, Franca and Carlo meet in secret at the church. They are still in a relationship, despite the hatred their children feel for each other. They usually meet at the church, but the priest catches them acting inappropriately, and they have to leave. Their situation is not an easy one. Carlo wants to tell everyone that they are together, but Franca is afraid of Sal's reaction to the news. She doesn't want to make her precious son uncomfortable. Carlo doesn't care as much for Vince because he feels he's getting older and he's tired of hiding like teenagers. The following day, Nikki changes her fancy clothes to her tomboyish clothes and goes to Leo's house. She's there to invite Leo to play soccer with her and end once and for all their competition. While she waits for Leo to appear, a pretty blonde woman rings his bell too. Nikki notices that she wears designer clothes and looks very put together. She immediately feels self-conscious about her tomboy clothes. The woman is there to see Leo, and when he opens the door, he introduces Nikki as his best friend. It's like a punch to Nikki's gut. She feels silly being there, waiting to play soccer with Leo while he's waiting for a bombshell of a woman to sleep with. It breaks her heart that she has to see him going for another girl again. She wants the ground to open and swallow her whole but before, she apologizes for the way her father behaved. Leo brushes her off and asks if she wants to have dinner with him. Despite her brain telling her to say no, Nikki's heart is pounding hard in her chest. She accepts it, telling herself that it's only his friends. The fact that he has a woman in his apartment makes it easier. In the evening, Nikki goes to Luigi's bar and finds out that Vince and Sal have a recurring drinking competition that people bet on. She watches as her father and Vince start arguing and saying mean things to each other. She and Leo are dragged into the argument for no reason. It's ridiculous to watch and soon Nikki gets tired of it and leaves. The next day, Franca and Carlo meet again, this time in a cafe. Carlo tries to make Franca change her mind about telling their families about their relationship, but she refuses. Later on, there's a barbecue at Nikki's house and she talks about Leo to Gina. She admits she's still attracted to him and that she accepted to have dinner with him, even though he had another girl in his apartment. Gina thinks Nikki is still in love with Leo, but she denies it profusely. She would never tell anyone about her true feelings for Leo. She already had her heart broken by him before so she'd rather not put herself in that position anymore. She should act aloof and unbothered by him. While they are talking, a man arrives at their house. He's there because her mother invited him, with hopes of matchmaking Nikki with him. Nikki has no interest whatsoever in the weird man and quickly finds an excuse to leave his presence. In the evening, Nikki goes to Leo's apartment and she's surprised that he's already preparing dinner. He decided to make pizza for her, to remind her of their good times. Nikki helps him with the pizza, giving him ideas of ingredients that would match. They have fun cooking and flirting with each other while they wait for the pizza. When the pizza is ready and they taste it, they learn they have great chemistry in the kitchen too. The pizza is delicious, and it's not the traditional sauce and cheese that their parents are used to making. Nikki is surprised that Leo has so much talent to cook, and he admits he has a dream of having his pizza place one day. He doesn't dare to do it yet because he knows it would hurt his father's feelings. She suggests that he starts cooking with his father, but Vince would never accept his ideas. That's one of the reasons why Nikki left. She felt suffocated by her father's constant competition and his expectations of her. She preferred to leave and become a chef than a pizzaiola. Leo is the opposite. He thinks more about his family than himself, and that's why he stayed. His family means everything to him. Dinner ends up being great. Nikki was afraid that it would be awkward, but it wasn't. They reconnect after years away and it feels as if she never left. Leo takes her to the roof of his apartment and it's very romantic. They can see all of Little Italy from there and remember their fond memories. Nikki is surprised that Leo has a garden full of herbs and he again mentions his desire of having his restaurant. Leo invites Nikki to dance with him and that's when things get complicated. They are dancing closely, staring into each other's eyes as they sway to the sounds of Little Italy. Leo mentions the last time they danced was at Gina's wedding and they kissed for the first time. The next day, Nikki was gone to London and never said goodbye to Leo. She doesn't admit that she didn't because she was in love with him and she was afraid he would break her heart. She did what was easier for her and left. While they are dancing, Leo almost kisses her again. 
but Nikki steps away. She explains that their relationship doesn't have a future and that she's going to go back to London. She doesn't want to stay in Little Italy and go back to the way things were. After saying that, Nikki leaves. She feels a heavy weight on her heart, but she thinks going away is the right thing to do. She's insecure about Leo's feelings, not knowing that Leo is also afraid of his feelings. He loves Nikki, but his family is his priority. He didn't want to disappoint his father by dating Nikki. After she left, he started dating a lot of women and got a bad reputation that only makes Nikki step back from him. He's sad to see her go and doesn't know what to do. Moving on, Franca and Carlo meet again at the cafe and he proposes to her. Franca is very happy, but she tells him that she can't because of Cell. Not only that, she feels as if she would betray the memory of her late husband. She leaves him and goes back home. When Nikki arrives home, she sees her grandmother looking sad and talks to her. Franca explains to Nikki that she's thinking about her late husband. Nikki is curious about how she met him, and Franca tells her the story. Nikki's grandfather used to be a ladies' man until he met Franca. After that, he only had eyes for one woman. Nikki thinks it's a beautiful love story, but she has no hope for something like that to happen to her. She thinks of Leo, but they are too different to work out. She's ambitious and wants to have more in life while he prefers to wait for things to happen. The next morning, Leo's making the same pizza he made with Nikki for his father to try. Carlo wonders how his date was and he replies that it was nice. Carlo notices that Leo is holding himself back, and thinks he's being foolish. He advises Leo to go after what he wants before it's too late. If he wants Nikki to stay with him in Little Italy, he has to remind her how happy she used to be living there. Leo likes his idea, and for the first time, he decides to think about himself first. Leaving his pizza there for his family to try, he goes after her. Meanwhile, Vince tries Leo's pizza and loves it. His wife thinks he should stop being so headstrong and start following Leo's suggestions. Otherwise, they would go bankrupt. Carlo follows his advice and goes after Franca. He knows she's afraid, but he's tired of being afraid. He's too old for that feeling. He finds her drinking a lot of coffee at the cafe and comforts her. He tells her that he wants to have a house with her where they can do whatever they want. He wants to share his life with her without any secrets or fear. He loves her and wants to spend the rest of his life with her. It's a beautiful and heartfelt confession. Franca can't say no to him again, because she loves him too. Nikki is trying to make a good menu for her boss when Leo climbs the stairs to her room. He's carrying a pizza box and tells her that he wants to go out with her the following morning. Nikki is confused by his behavior, but she accepts the pizza and the invitation. When she opens the box, the pizza is heart-shaped and delicious. She smiles giddily despite her insecurities about Leo. It's the first time he does something so romantic to her. The next day, she is up bright and early to meet him. He doesn't tell her where they are going. He plans to show her that Little Italy is still a nice place. He takes her to the town's open-air market, then he takes her to pester their old neighbor like they used to do. Nikki has a lot of fun with him. It's nostalgic to go around town on his bike, doing things they used to do as kids. Back then, their lives were easier. Their parents were still friends and they spent all their time together. Deep down, Nikki misses it. Living in a big city brings plenty of opportunities, yet the unparalleled sense of belonging that Little Italy provides is truly unmatched. When they go back to Leo's place, they are wet after they cooled off in the fire hydrant water. Nikki decides at that moment to seduce Leo. Her mind is filled with good memories of him, along with her never-ending love. She wants to have a taste of what being with Leo would be like. Leo isn't expecting when she starts kissing him in her underwear. He wants to be respectful and not cross any line she doesn't want to, but Nikki reassures him that's what she wants. They get intimate and it's like finally coming home after a long day. They were made to be together, and they realized it at that moment. Unfortunately, all good moments come to an end. After her moment with Leo, her boss calls her to ask about her menu. She warns Nikki that the other chef already sent him. Nikki starts freaking out because she doesn't want to lose the opportunity. It also dawns on her that she slept with Leo, her childhood friend. She loves him. She doesn't think he loves her too. Nikki has to make a choice. She goes back to London to work for Corinne in a prestigious restaurant, or she stays in Little Italy to see what happens with Leo. She makes up her mind when Leo approaches her. She tells him that they are wasting their time, mainly her. She thinks that if she stays, she's going to work at her father's pizza shop and watch Leo get married to another girl. Nikki refuses to let her hard work go down the drain like that. Before she leaves again, she tells him that she enjoyed their tryst, but that's all that is. Leo is sad and confused again. He doesn't know what to do with Nikki. He followed his grandfather's advice and it didn't work out. Unbeknownst to Nikki, he wants her to be happy no matter what. It's going to be painful to watch her walk away again, but he's willing to if it's what makes her happy. Later on, Leo's parents are checking their economies and it doesn't look good. Amelia tells Vince again to listen to Leo and his ideas. They need to do something or they are going to lose everything. Carlo appears and happily tells them they are going to have a family dinner later on. They don't know why, but Carlo and Franca are ready to confess their relationship to everyone. 
In the meantime, Nikki is stirring her grandmother's sauce and wondering what the secret ingredient is. No one but Franca knows. Dora is there with her and they start talking about relationships. Nikki wants to know what made her mother stay in Little Italy with her father, still confused about her feelings for Leo. Dora tells her that she loves Sal despite their arguments and the lack of money. She never thought of leaving him. Franca arrives and while Dora goes out to talk to Sal, she tells Nikki her secret ingredient. She's so happy she's almost bursting. When Sal and Dora come back, she tells them that they are going out to have dinner. They have no idea what's expected of them at the restaurant. When the two families arrive, Sal and Vince almost jump at each other's throats. They sit awkwardly at the table, with Nikki sitting next to Leo. After some moments of uncomfortable silence, Franca and Carlo tell them they are in a relationship and moving in together. Leo and Nikki find it funny because their whole family freaks out. After they slept together, they thought they would be the catalyst to make their family fall apart. Nikki is the only one to congratulate them because everybody else is too shocked to do so. She also tells Sal and Vince that they should stop fighting once and for all. They don't agree and start arguing again, dragging Nikki and Leo into their problems. The next pizza competition is approaching and they decide to make a bet. Nikki and Leo would compete, and whoever the loser is, has to leave Little Italy. Nikki refuses to cook for a pizza competition because she's a chef, and Leo thinks she's just afraid of losing to him again. They start arguing and it slips that they were intimate with each other. Their parents are shocked again. Things get worse when Leo Snidely says that Nikki let him win her body the night before like she always does. Nikki can't believe he would say something so nasty and slaps him hard. After that, she congratulates her grandmother again and storms off. Leo calls her back, already regretting his harsh words, but Nikki is too upset. She feels used by him, something she was always afraid would happen. She tells him that Little Italy is always the same. Their families with their petty fighting and Leo being a player. Dinner didn't work the way Franca and Carlo expected it to. They thought they would have problems with their sons, not their grandchildren. Leo feels discouraged while he's working at the bar. Luigi notices he's morose and lets him vent about Nikki. Leo thought Luigi would take his side, but Luigi tells him that he's always running from his feelings for Nikki. He keeps finding excuses for not going after her, and that's why she's so afraid of committing to him. He never gave her any assurance that he loves her. He suggests Leo stops running before it's too late. Meanwhile, Franca finds Nikki crying at the church. Nikki is very sad about the way Leo treated her like an object, not like his childhood friend. She tells Franca about London, and Franca advises her to choose what makes her happy. For the first time, Nikki admits she's in love with Leo, though it hurts. The only thing she wants is to be happy and have a good life. Her grandma understands her feelings and tells her that if she's meant to be with Leo, things are going to work out. The next day, they see each other again at their family's pizza shops. They don't know how to act after what happened, so they choose to be competitive. It's the day of the pizza competition, the day that's going to put a stop to their family feud. Nikki isn't excited at all. She feels terrible, sad, and lost. She loves Leo, but she doesn't know if he loves her back. She loves her family, but she hates their overbearing ways. It's very confusing. Leo is also confused about his feelings. He feels bad about the way he treated Nikki, yet he doesn't apologize. The competition starts and they both win the first round. When they face off, Nikki decides to give Leo the win. Instead of using her grandmother's sauce in her pizza, she uses Leo. With the perfect combination of Franca's sauce and Carlo's crust, Leo wins the competition. While he's celebrating with his family, Nikki grabs her luggage and silently leaves. The only person to notice is Franca. She doesn't say anything because it's Nikki's choice to make. When the competition judges inform people that tasting Leo's pizza was like tasting Sal's and Vince's, he connects the dots that Nikki let him win. He tells everyone that the pizza is only good because of the combination of sauce and crust, and calls Nikki to go get the prize with him. It's at this point that he realizes Nikki left. This time, he isn't willing to let her go without a fight. He goes after him, much to their father's chagrin. Their mothers decide to put a stop to their argument because they would not mess up their relationship over their feud. Nikki is already at the airport and sends Corinne a message that she's going to present her menu in person. Leo looks everywhere for her and at the last moment, he finds her. He confesses his feelings to her and says that he wants to be with her. He also admits to his father that he wants to open his pizza place. Nikki doesn't understand why he never said anything before, and that it may be too late. Leo thinks she's going to go to London when she decides to give him a chance. They kiss in front of everyone, and when they separate, Nikki confesses that she has loved him for a long time. After their happy reunion, it's time to deal with their fathers. They want to know why they fought, and they finally admit it. When they won the competition, they needed to name the pizza. Sal wanted to name it after his mother, and Vince after his father. It was stupid and neither Franca nor Vince wanted a pizza to be named after them. Realizing that they were idiots, they finally make peace. Sometime later, Franca and Carlo finally get married. The party happens at Leo's and Nikki's new pizza place, the Pizza Organica. 
The pizzas are a huge success, and their parents are proud of them, even Vince. To make their ending even happier, Nikki's former boss is at the party complaining about her restaurant. It was a disaster without Nikki to help her and closed after a few months. She gives Nikki a suggestion of opening a franchise of Pizza Organica in London, and the couple happily agrees. Nikki couldn't be happier about the choices she made. She could have gone to London and lived away from her family's drama. But she's glad that she chose to stay with Leo, especially after they overcame their differences and confessed their feelings.